So this video is for all of our business owners out there, okay? So having an operating agreement, we get asked this question all the time, right? I'm a single member LLC. Do I really, meaning it's just you, right? Do I really, really have to have an operating agreement? Listen, honestly, the answer is it depends, okay? Like every other answer in the world, it depends. Generally, yes, we highly recommend having an operating agreement, even if it is just you, okay? But absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, if you have a partner, if it's you and some other person, even you and your spouse, if it's you and anyone else, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely have an operating agreement, okay? This is one of the biggest areas that we see business owners get into fights with their partners over, all right? So let me give you a basic example. So you get into business with your friend Bob and you've known Bob forever for 20 years and everything's always been handshake and everything's been just fine. Except for now, your business is now making millions, right? You're doing really, really, really well. Bob wants to take money out to buy a commercial building, but you don't think it's a smart investment, okay? Now you're in a fight. Now you're into an argument. Without an operating agreement, it's up to the, lo the laws of that state as to what's going to happen, right? How do you split up your company? What happens if one of you passes away? Does your spouse get the, or their spouse get the other half of your business? What if you don't like that spouse, okay? An operating agreement should effectively be a prenuptial agreement, but for a business, okay? So you wanna be asking all the same questions that you would if you were about to get married to somebody. How do you like to deal with money? Uh, when do you think we should sell the business? What happens if I don't wanna do the business anymore, but you do, right? What, what is the price for you buying out my half? Are we going to get insurance on each other? You know, what if one person is the marketing person, marketing sales, and the other person does the work? Well, if one of those two people passes away, does the whole company collapse? Or can you hire somebody else as a replacement? So these are all the types of questions that you want to cover in a good operating agreement. Uh, the best operating agreements that I've seen are somewhere between 60 and 100 pages ages long because they cover so many topics. So if you're in a business, especially if you're in a business with a partner or with multiple partners, make sure you have that operating agreement and make sure you've worked out all the hairy details before you lose your rose colored glasses about being in business with each other. So if you have any questions, we have some great contract attorneys that we can always refer you to. And of course, as you guys know, our specialty is the tax strategy side of those operating agreements. So depending on how the agreements are written, if you go to sell your business, it could mean major tax impacts. If you go to shut it down, it could mean major tax impacts. So always double check with both professional teams when you're writing that operating agreement. Both the attorneys or the attorneys for all the different parties, right? If there's six people, there should be six attorneys. I know it's a big mess but worth every penny of your time. And of course, check with the CPAs, check with the tax strategists, right? So check with, I guess, three people uh, to make sure that your operating agreement, the way you've written it, does what you intend it to do to protect all the parties involved and also doesn't back you into a tax corner if you go to sell or shut it down in the future. All right, as usual, if you guys have any questions, you can always reach out to us, taxgoddess.com, strategictaxcoach.com, or dropmytaxes.com. So signing off with much tax love, Shauna, your tax goddess. Bye.